At the start of the movie, a woman named Carol heads out to the streets for a walk, but notices something very unusual. People seem to have become soulless, as there is not a fragment of emotion on anyone's face. The place is turned into a dead town. To make matters worse, those showing emotions are apprehended by the police. An elderly woman keeps saying, don't sleep. But even she is captured by the police. After walking for a while, a normal looking cop approaches Carol and notices that she is sweating. Hence, he warns her to run away or else she will be caught and killed. It appears as if showing emotions or sleeping will cause death. Following this, the movie cuts to a few days ago. A space shuttle explodes on Earth's surface and scatters across many states in the US. Every media outlet in the country is covering the news as they believe that it is the sign of an alien invasion. On the other hand, the people are terrified, and they hesitate to touch the debris, fearing that it has been infected. Meanwhile, the head of the Center of Disease Control, Tucker Kaufman, arrives at one of the crash sites for inspection. He approaches the research team and gets to know that the piece of debris was laced with a mysterious organism that has the ability to withstand enormous levels of radiation. The organism can also multiply at a rapid rate, implying that it is from another planet. Later, while Tucker is preparing to leave, he unknowingly touches a small piece of the debris and receives a cut on his finger. However, he doesn't think much of it, which given that he's the head of the CDC is ridiculous, and proceeds towards his home. That night, Tucker starts sweating profusely and experiences an intense cellular condensation on his face, as if something is taken over him. In the next scene, we are introduced to Tucker's ex-wife, Carol. She is a psychiatrist by profession who lives with their only son, Oliver. That night, Oliver has a nightmare and starts screaming, but his mother immediately springs into action and calms him down. The following morning, Carol gets a call from Tucker, who expresses his desire to see his son, but as expected, she simply says no and hangs up the call. Shortly after, she drops Oliver off at school and proceeds to her workplace. On the way, she runs into her best friend, Dr. Ben Driscoll, and takes a lift. Driscoll mentions that the government is hiding something serious from them, as all the researchers on the crash site have resigned. However, Carol is in no mood to chat about this topic <laughs> and instead complains about her ex-husband. She tells Driscoll that Tucker has been acting very strange as of late, and he suddenly wants to see their son, despite being away for the past four years. As the two friends continue their conversation, they arrive outside Carol's office and part ways. Later, Carol starts her counseling session for the day. Her first patient is a middle-aged woman named Wendy, who reveals that her husband has been acting very weird as of late. Just a few days ago, he killed their family dog without any remorse. Carol instantly realizes that something is wrong, but for the time being, she just prescribes a few medications to her patient. Have some Xanax. That'll stop your husband from killing things. After finishing work, Carol and her neighbor Pam take their children out trick-or-treating as it is Halloween night. When they approach a house, the family dog starts barking profusely as if it has sensed something. Wendy's husband must be nearby. Carol and her gang proceed to leave, but just then, the dog lunges towards Pam's son, Andy, and tackles him to the ground. Surprisingly, despite the terrifying situation, the little boy doesn't even flinch. Instead, he squeezes the dog's mouth with his bare hands until help arrives and separates the two. Shortly after, the group reaches Carol's home where the mothers have a brief chat. Pam reveals that Andy has been acting very strange for some days and sometimes she thinks that he has lost his emotions. However, Carol, being a psychiatrist, assures her that it is very normal for kids his age. Suddenly, Oliver starts screaming from another room and when Carol reaches there, she finds a strange piece of flesh coming out of his hand. Worried, she immediately takes it to Driscoll's lab where his friend and popular scientist, Dr. Galliano, starts his experiments. In the meantime, a mysterious virus has started to decimate the country. Thousands of people are dying every day, but no one knows the cause of it. As a result, an emergency meeting is held in the capital, where all the prominent researchers are present. Tucker Kaufman, who has been tasked with headlining the meeting, explains that the new virus is spreading at an unprecedented rate, and if they don't do anything about it, the country will go into a recession. When some researchers ask about the solution, Tucker says that the only way to stem the spread is by conducting an inoculation program. As the meeting goes on, several infected waiters inside the kitchen are seen puking into the tea that is going to be served to everyone. Ew. Later that night, Carol reluctantly decides to let Tucker spend the weekend with Oliver, as he is the father, after all. While she is driving to his house, a terrified lady suddenly appears, asking for help. She keeps mentioning that something terrible is about to happen, but before she can reveal the cause, a car runs her over. Shortly after, the cops arrive at the scene 
scene. Carol asserts that she's ready to testify against the reckless driver, but the head cop simply tells her to go home. Hearing this, Carol starts assuming that something really bad is happening in the city. After a while, she drops Oliver at Tucker's place and leaves. That same night, Carol and Driscoll attend a lavish party, where they engage in a short conversation with Czech diplomat Dr. Belichick and his wife, Ludmia. The two then meet other diplomats, including Dr. Urish, and talk about the dark side of human nature. After the party, Driscoll tries to kiss Carol in the car, but the latter backs off, saying that she doesn't want to ruin their friendship. She also doesn't want that alien sociopath disease. The next morning, while Carol is heading to work, she notices something very strange. Several people have completely frozen as if their soul has been taken away. When she reaches the office, she is taken aback to find that all of her clients have canceled their appointments for the day. Just then, she receives a call from Driscoll, informing her that the test results of the strange skin patch have come out. In the next scene, Carol reaches the lab, where Dr. Galliano is waiting for her. He reveals that the skin sample is made up of several molecular spores that take over the human brain during sleep and alter the genetic code, rendering a person unstable. Hence, in order to prevent the deadly infection they are forbidden from sleeping until they find a cure. Meanwhile, Ludmia calls Driscoll and informs him that Dr. Urish has been acting strangely. As a result, the three immediately rush to the diplomat's house, where they come across Urish in a terrible state. Carol tries taking a picture of him, but suddenly, the monster-like man wakes up and attacks her. However, before any serious damage is caused, Driscoll thwarts Urish, causing him to vomit a weird liquid and die. Following the incident, Carol becomes scared and rushes to retrieve Oliver from her ex-husband. When she reaches the place, she sees Tucker in a meeting with some of his associates. Carol is worried about her son, but Tucker assures her that Oliver is playing at his friend Jean's house. Despite this, she isn't convinced and starts looking for her son, but just then, the men from the meeting surround her. A terrified Carol tries to run, but Tucker effortlessly tackles her to the ground and infects her with his saliva. Fortunately, she somehow manages to escape the house and get into her car. Carol drives recklessly through the neighborhood resulting in an accident. When she gets out of the car, she is again chased by a group of infected people. But even this time, she evades them and enters a subway station. Shortly after, Carol gets on the train, which is full of passengers with the same vague expressions. Just then, she receives a message from Oliver, who asks her to save him immediately, as Tucker has taken him somewhere. This worries Carol, and when she breaks down in desperation, a passenger tells her to act emotionless if she doesn't want to get caught. Suddenly, a group of infected passengers enter the compartment and start a brawl. They try to subdue Carol, but she somehow manages to exit the train and flee. She then gets back to the road and witnesses some cops forcing the uninfected citizens to be inoculated with the virus. Meanwhile, an uninfected cop notices the sweat on her face and tells her to run, indicating that the infected ones cannot sweat. By this time, the city is turned into a war zone and several people are committing the unthinkable to save themselves from the virus. In the next scene, Carol rushes over to the Belichick mansion, where Driscoll and Dr. Galliano are still conducting their tests. After a bit of discussion, Driscoll decides to help Carol find her son, while Dr. Galliano and his assistant prepare to travel to Fort Detrick, Maryland, to find a cure for the virus. They also decide to stay awake, fearing that they might have been infected. Later, when Carol and Driscoll head back to the streets, they notice Wendy being forcefully taken away by the cops. When she tries resisting, the infected cops zap her with a stick and knock her out. Despite this, she doesn't turn. Carol and Driscoll notice this and deduce that Wendy has somehow developed an immunity to the virus. After a while, the duo steals a police car and arrives at Carol's office, where they begin searching through Wendy's medical profile. Driscoll finds out that Wendy was suffering from a brain illness called encephalitis, and this is the reason why the virus doesn't want to enter her brain. The virus only tends to attack healthy brains so that it can feast on it and multiply its number. Just then, Carol gets another text from Oliver, mentioning that he is being held at his grandmother's home in Baltimore. Scared, Carol comes clean with Driscoll that she has already been infected with the virus. Despite this, her best friend assures her that everything will be alright. Following this, Driscoll somehow manages to drop Carol off at the train station before the city gets sealed. After sharing an emotional goodbye, the two depart. Then, Carol boards the train to Baltimore, where she unexpectedly runs into Oliver's friend, Jean, who has also been infected. It turns out that he is also heading to 
meet Oliver. After the train reaches Baltimore, Tucker arrives at the station to escort Carol and Jean to his mother's place. That evening, Tucker gets a call from his associates and heads outside. Taking this as the perfect opportunity, Carol scans through the house and finally finds her son. The two then have an emotional reunion, and Oliver mentions that he is still uninfected, despite sleeping every day. Here, we get to know that the little boy is taking constant medication for his sleeping disorder, and that is why he isn't infected with the virus. Suddenly, Jean approaches the two and tries to infect them with the virus, but Carol easily swats him away and rushes out with her son. On the way out, Tucker catches wind of the escape and immediately chases after his family. He tracks them inside an abandoned warehouse and tries hurting them, but Carol grabs an iron rod and strikes him in the head, finally killing him. Following this, the mother-son duo enters a pharmacy, where Carol finds an injection and hands it over to her son. She then instructs the boy to inject it into her in case she falls asleep. Meanwhile, she gets a call from Driscoll and informs him about their location. As she is busy on the call, Oliver slowly approaches a door, which has blood splattered nearby it. She immediately stops him and instead enters herself to inspect. There, she notices several infected people lying on the ground and rushes out, but not before grabbing a gun from one of them. A while later, when little Oliver falls asleep, Carol desperately searches for medication and literally anything she can get her hands on to keep her awake. The next morning, the infected people inside the room have come back to life, and they repeatedly knock on the door to get out. This wakes Oliver up, and when he realizes that his mother has fallen asleep, he swiftly injects her with the syringe, saving her life. But the danger is far from averted. The infected people inside the room continue banging on the door ferociously. Just when it seems that all hope is lost, Driscoll arrives at the location. Carol is ecstatic to see him, but when she finds out that he too has become infected, she backs away from him. Driscoll keeps mentioning that the virus has made him more powerful, and he now feels invigorated. He also tries persuading Carol to join him, mentioning that the new society will have no problems, such as crime, hatred, discrimination, and so on. A terrified Carol points her gun at him, but Driscoll still opens the door and lets out all the other infected people. Then, he mentions that the infected people hate the immune ones, pointing at Oliver. Saying this, everyone tries to apprehend the little boy, but Carol shoots and kills them one by one. When it's Driscoll's turn, she simply shoots shoots him in the leg, and escapes with Oliver. Outside, they steal a police car and narrowly avoid several infected people. While driving around haphazardly, Carol gets a call from Dr. Galliano, who tells her to come to a building where a chopper is ready to take off. Following the instructions, Carol somehow reaches the place with Oliver, and finally, they are saved. In the final scene, we are shown that scientists have finally created a vaccine for the deadly virus. Because of this, the virus has been eradicated from the entire world, and life has become normal again. Dr. Galliano, who is one of the driving forces behind the vaccine, reveals in an interview that the vaccinated people will have no memories of the earlier events. Meanwhile, Carol has adopted Jean, and she is now in a relationship with Driscoll. The movie ends as Oliver and Jean head to school, while Driscoll reads a newspaper, completely unaware of the heroism that he showed a year earlier. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.